Thank you all for tuning into this video. Today we're going to be doing a fade on very coarse hair, but we're going to use the same steps to start out just like any other haircut. So we're going to make our initial ball guideline around the entire head. And we're going to start off by using the lever, the clipper with the lever fully open. And I'm using the Andis Cordless Master in this uh, video. And I bought this clipper strictly for YouTube. But guys, when I tell you, it's been so hard for me to use this clipper. And I'm not bashing this clipper or anything, but it's probably my least favorite clipper to use. For one, it's just, it's so loud. It's a little bit on the heavy side. And then the material is metal. So it's not really, you see, I have that grip on there. The, it doesn't really have any places for you to grip your hand in my opinion and then to me the blades just don't cut as close as my other clippers but i'm not bashing it feel free to buy it yourself it's just not my cup of tea but i'm still going to try to use it for the videos So now that we've blended out that bottom guideline, we're gonna start with the one and a half guard and we're going to debulk the hair. Right now the lever is fully open and I'm going to gradually close it. Okay, next I have on the zero guard and the lever is fully open. So I know if you see me use wall guards, I usually start out with the one open, but these guards blend different lengths in my opinion. So that's why I'm starting with the zero open. So the steps with the zero guard open, right now I'm closing the lever and then I'm gonna go halfway. And then now you see me going halfway. So we're going in between that zero open and that zero closed. And you can see the fade coming together all already. Okay, next I have the, I have on the one guard and the lever is fully closed. The fade is pretty much blended, but I'm just using the one guard to get any weight that I see. So any dark spots, you see me right, you see right there in that area, the hair is a little bit more dense. So I'm just using the corner of the blade with the one guard to touch up the fade just a little bit more. And notice how I'm only using the corners of the blade because I don't want to create a new guideline. I'm literally just picking and choosing certain spots. And then this is just detail work at this point. Doing the same thing that I just did. I'm just using one or two teeth on the blade, getting any dark spots that I see. This may not look like it makes much of a difference, but I promise you it does. So after you go through your steps, this is where you come back and finish up the fade.
And I'm just going to sit back and let you guys watch this. It's really the same thing that I did on the left side. I'm just going to let you see it in the back because the occipital bone can give some people trouble. So I just wanted to see to show you guys how I blend that out. If these steps right here are too fast for you, just rewind on the other side and you'll see I do the same exact thing. The only thing that I did different right here, I just started with the zero open. I kind of got in a rhythm, so I just went ahead and used a zero guard, but you'll still see me come back after this with a one and a half guard. So the steps are still the same. I just did one before the other. But either way, we'll get you the same result. And if you guys have used this clipper before, comment below what you like about it and what you don't like about it. I know it may have sounded like I was bashing it. I really wasn't. I was just giving my honest opinion. So I want to know what you guys think about this clipper as well. So right here, this is where I debut with the one and a half. And then here I just come back with the one guard to clean, to clean up any dark spots. Okay, now we're going to proceed on with the lineup. We're going to try to keep everything natural, but still get it crisp at the same time. So you just want to find that in between point, that sweet spot. Some people, when they do arches, they like to exaggerate the C to make it really pop. But the reason I don't like to do that because the grow back will be terrible. About three or four days after the haircut, you will really see where it was exaggerated and it just won't look good. And you can see by the texture of his beard, his hair is extremely coarse and it's prone to ingrown hairs. But nevertheless, you're gonna have all hair types that come in your chair, so you need to be able to cut all of them. And I'm just adding some mousse and just styling his hair before I do the lineup. Just to give the haircut some another dimension, just to add some character to it. And this is a new sponge, by the way. I haven't used this on anyone else. I know you guys have seen me talk about sponges in my other videos, but that was a new sponge. I saw it in the beauty store and I wanted to try it out, so... And I'm just going to add uh, some light enhancement to the front of his line just to fill in those light spots. We're not going to overdo it, just going to try to make it look as natural as possible. And 
and here's the finished result guys